Good morning. Uh, this is Vaughan in Nova Scotia. Um, uh, this is uh, three weeks. Lost track of time. I think we're over three weeks of isolation and staying home at the moment. So it's lucky we've got pots to make. Um, and I know a lot of you don't have that. Um, and so you've got to figure out how to fill all this time. Um, but find something creative anyway. Um, I'm actually, uh, because one of the people who looked at one of the videos asked me to make some more big pieces. Uh, these are not very big, but um, they're about, uh, I would say about 12 pounds of clay. Um, maybe only 10. But anyway, I was just going to throw a couple of really big plant pots because I spent the last few days making a large 400 square foot raised bed garden. Um, so I'm going to be planting lots of uh, vegetables and uh, greens, basically, uh, this uh, spring. I've got the seedlings planted in the studio here, struggling to find some light. Um, it's a fairly light studio, but basically uh, the seedlings like to be outside. Uh, they always bend over when looking for the windows. Uh, but anyway, hopefully a lot of them will survive. Um, but I'm going to do some plant pots, and I've been making lots of planters, because I think that uh, since we're supposed to be closed, if they do loosen the regulations and we're allowed to sell with a social distancing, I'm thinking it'd be better to sell things outdoors. Um, and uh, so we can minimize the contact in the, in the studio. Um, but anyway, uh, so I'll throw a couple of big pieces. Um, just basic planters. All right, so get all my tool area cleaned up. There's my little tool I've shown before. Um, one of my people watching videos has made one using a 3D printer. But anyway, if you notice on this one, the slit with the rubber band is at an angle and that's the best one. I like the, uh, this one better than this one. You see how the rubber band tends to go over an angle when it's cut flat. So um, the one with the angle thing, it's perfect because when you put it over the rim, it actually um, you know, nicely goes right over the actual rim. All right, so wheels on. And you can see what I'm doing. One of the other videos I started, you couldn't see very well. All right, so see this is the clay it's my recycled clay i just uh don't usually recycle small amounts at a time but i just uh i know it's there it's about uh, 100 pounds of clay i just did um all right so i've just banged it it's straight out of the pug mill so it's nice and soft yeah i bet that's 10 pounds it's not that much but i can get a pretty decent size planter out of that and you can see well enough all right so let's get it centered so big pieces you really get your body tucked up nicely and it's sealed on the wheel with all that packing that I did whenever I pull up I always get this little hollow area so what I before I pull a big piece up like that I'll just kind of make a little cone on the top so it doesn't make a hollow in this in the actual center as I'm squishing and coning so that doesn't actually have a hole of it. Let's do one more, get a little taller. Because this is recycled clay, um, I know there's inconsistencies in it, including lumps and stones. But um, the winter we get rock, rock salt brought in on the shoes. There we go. Yeah, it's uh, Easter Friday. So uh, it's going to be hard for a lot of people to stay home today, but you just have to do it. So we're at about 330 cases in the whole province of Nova Scotia. We have less than a million people in the province. So it's a very wooded province, lots of forests, no original growth, I don't think. Maybe there's one place where there's some original forest, but it's a big lumbering industry over the years. Most of it's finished now, though. There's hardly any mills going. All right, so that's just to compress the clay. Make the hockey puck. Now, if you, when you send your big piece, you've got to try and put your hand right on the wheel head. See how it cleaned the wheel head a little bit? Because if you don't, the clay squishes underneath your hand and you don't have enough compression on the bottom. So you might get cracks on the bottom of your piece. So it's good to, when you do that, to put your left hand right on the wheel head and push in, but don't push in so you end up with a groove, like a big hollow mushroom. 
on the underside there, basically just keep your sides fairly vertical. See, vertical thing, head straight down. Anyway, all right, wet. Make a little dimple. Now it's a big piece of clay, so it's gonna dry fast when you actually do the push down. So it's a good idea to make a hollow and just put some water in there so you've got some reservoir to work with. And I've lifted my hands up, but I'm tucked them into my side, so I'm not gonna wobble. I'm basically pushing down using my middle finger of my right hand with my other middle finger on my left hand is over the top. So I went right to the bottom, it's still soft. I'm gonna drag a little, and now I'm gonna to pull towards my body. And then I'll be able to see if I went down far enough. Yeah, I could go a little further. Let's get the sponge and soften my fingers down there. Just a little bit more. Planters get abused outside, so it's nice to have them a little thick. Um, I tend to throw mine fairly thin, but, um, but you know, I don't leave them out in the winter either. I always bring them in. If they haven't got any soil in them, uh, you can leave them out. My planters have survived outside. I've got a, a whole display out front. One day I'll, I have a video camera from one building pointing at this one so showing the building. I'll try and figure out how to put that online too so you can see. But I leave a display up all winter outside with snow all over it. Except for this winter we got very little snow. Alright, so I basically just concentrated on flattening the inside that with the sponge so it's nice and compressed, running my finger from the outside of the wall to the center. So I have a nice central, you know, flat base that's fairly um, even um, and compressed. All right, so let's get some water on the rim. Now using my fingers inside and my knuckle on the outside, I'm gonna push in hard. With my fingers on the inside, I'm pushing back a little bit. And pull up, it's dry, it was drying right on that section there, really dry fast that time. But that's because I was using my knuckle rather than my fingertips. And so there's more surface area with my fingers. So I'm gonna use my fingertips this time. That's less contact with my skin to the clay. And I'm gonna slow the wheel down now because it's getting a little tall. It's still slippery at the top, but it's starting to dry. So I'm gonna let, gradually let go. As soon as you feel that little resistance and sort of stickiness, you've got to let go slowly because you know if you let go too fast it'll go off center I'm trying to let go over the complete circumference of the piece okay same again push in with my fingertips down there push back with my fingertips on the inside just going to slow the wheel down a touch i felt a little rock going around then too Let go slowly, put some compression on the rim because it's recycled clay, it's a little shorter so it doesn't stretch as easily, cracks too easily actually when it's recycled. The more times you recycle clay, the less of the plastic clays that are in it sort of are in there. And um, there we go. You can always add some ball clay if it gets too short. Okay, same again. Fingertips, so I'm not actually dragging too much skin over the surface so it doesn't dry too fast. It's sunny today, but uh, we're partly cloudy, I guess, but we had a storm overnight and we got rain, but up north they got some snow again. It's April 10th or 11th, Good Friday. Okay, so I'm gonna let go slow now. Dribble the water over the rim so it goes down the inside and the outside. I'm going to push my fingertips again. I'm angling them at 45 degrees too. So the clay rises over my fingertips and actually gets a bit taller.
to the rim and let go slow and put a bit of compression on the top. There you go. I guess that's a real plant pot. I don't like the kind of traditional salt, but put a belly in it. That's right on the rim, so it dribbles inside and outside. So now I'm going to try shaping a bit. There's a little thickness at the bottom, but it's getting kind of weighty now on the up above, so it's hard to get that thickness to actually get taller, but you can actually make it go to a belly. I've been also carving black and white mugs. I did a little short stop time motion thing the other day of me carving a mug. I actually made 25 of those mugs. Oops, fingers slipped then. I can feel that stone, but it's actually not causing any problems. So I think I'll leave it in. When they get fired, sometimes they melt in the firing and you'll end up with a little run of what looks like glaze from the stone. And then basically compress the rim. And now we've got to clean it up a bit. So then I move over to using the, I think I'll use a metal rib. There's all the water out the inside. So this will fire to a sort of speckly um, coffee color as a clay body. So I could put it in my gas kiln, but because of the situation this year, I usually find my gas kiln all summer, like at least twice a week. Uh, it's a 24 cubic foot kiln. So one will be a bisque firing and then another bisque firing and then I'll start glazing and, and actually uh, do two or three glaze firings. Um, but this year we are not sure if we'll have people going around because uh, tourism may not be encouraged with the lockdown everywhere. We may get local people. Um, but we don't think people will be flying on airplanes for quite a while. Um, and um, New Brunswick is right next to us, and that's a fairly rural state. In fact, they don't have hardly any COVID-19. They're very, being very lucky. But Nova Scotia's only got 330, I think, today. Only two people have died. Um, so sad and terrible. But at the same time, that's actually really good as far as the statistics uh, very unfortunate for those people um, but anyway let's see what we can do there's my metal rib all right so i'm going to belly it a touch so i smooth the inside with the sponge before i'm doing this pull because i tried to get out the water at the bottom Pull it all the way up on the inside so that it's equally moist all the way up. Now my fingertips are right opposite that rib so that um, there's a bit of compression going on too as well as stretching out. That's a lot of clay pulled off in that one pull. That was all the moist stuff on the outside edge, so that what I'm left with now is a nice surface. So let's do another belly. So I think we should all be planting lots of lettuce, lots of greens. I'm tired of washing up in soapy water all my vegetables before we eat them. So obviously when you eat raw food, you've got to wash it all in soapy water. And, um, and that's, that's tedious for a bunch of grapes, I guess. So, um, but, um, and lettuce, of course, you know, it's impossible. So, so I think in a planter like this, you could grow two or three different types of greens, some spinach, some uh, arugula. Arugula is called rocket in England, and, um, and it grows really fast. So that's why they call it rocket. But as you can see, this is a fairly decent sized planter. So if you had a back step outside the back door, you can be growing two or three of these enough <laughs> to actually feed yourself for a while with salad. I don't, I never pick the whole lettuce either when I'm actually doing um, my, my lettuce greens. I pick the outer leaves and leave the inside ones so that it keeps growing for a long time. 
Yeah, in the store we just buy a lettuce and it's all there, but when it's growing, just take the green leaves that you're going to use. Does that look big? All right. I think it was about 10 pounds of clay. Now I'm just doing the same with the metal rib to drag that water off the inside. There's not much on the inside because I used a sponge. Now what I'd like to try on these is to put some slip and carve through a little bit to like a little band on the outer edge just to give a little decoration. But it's, it's a bit soft this clay to actually do that right now. But my slips are right there if I wanted to do it. But uh, well, I showed you on the tea bowls, which I just put in the bisque firing too, those tea bowls I decorated. So next week uh, or later on the weekend, I will try to uh, glaze those. And like I said, they're slip decorated, but I'm not going to use a, a clear glaze. I'm going to use my, um, I, I really like um, the way my, oat, my yellow oatmeal looks over the, uh, there's one there out of a book I got called Mouse Grey, I think it's called. Um, but my oatmeal, I have two oatmeals as I've talked in the past, but the yellow oatmeal does this beautiful sand color over the top of this gray glaze. And so I'll try that one. And then my Tenmaku Gold, um, I'll do that with a couple of things over the top as well. Uh, and those glazes are semi-transparent. They're not complete, so they'll give a really nice effect. So this little wood tool, it's really old, sort of 30, 40 years old or older. And it's got a nice profile down there that I've worn away. It used to come to a point, but I've worn it away over the years. And, um, and it's perfect. It's you know, a beautiful tool now. So if I want, um, I can actually try this just because the pot's on the wheel and I can't resist. I'll give a little edge to that. And the one up above has already got that nice edge there. Can you see that? You know, sometimes when you're doing these, the clay just says, I've had enough. So you've got to watch out for that because it can start to just give. But you know, this is the simple thing that everybody's taught at high school, basically. But it will break the glaze nicely. All right, just something, catch the glaze. All right, so scrap clay. I didn't even wedge this clay. I mean, it's basically right out of the pug mill, banged into a lump. And there's a couple of sharp edges there. I should rub the sponge on it just to get rid of those sharp edges. Now this clay does have grit in. So that's where this tool comes in handy. You can use a leather. Is it wide enough? Oh, this is right at the limits of this tool. Oh, it's too narrow. So this tool's no good. So I'll have to use my leather, which I don't know what I did with. But, um, oh, there it is, deep in the bottom. So I don't use a leather if I can help it. But, um, but yeah, those tools that I make, you've got to decide how wide you want the whole gap to be. Um, and um, and I, mine's only about just over a centimeter, so. But anyway, because there's grit in this clay, you can just get that over the rim. Just to round it off a little bit. And that's a planter. I can't remember the person who asked me to throw a big piece, but that was just for you. All right, okay, well, um, I will make another one right now and then another nine because I have about 11 of these to do so um, so thanks for stopping in I can duck down a bit and um, honestly be really careful you know just uh, everything that they're telling us to do just we'll get through this um, and then it's gonna be one hell of a party you know so um, be really good and be careful thanks very much for checking out again bye